Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Big Sleeps, right here in Vancouver, and I'm with my man, Bill Bellamy, yes. on the set of Kindergarten Cop. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Big Sleeps, and we sitting here with <laughs> Bill Bellamy on Tycoon's TV, and we, we gonna talk to him about what? Damn, it's a real train. Yes. <laughs> That's like an old school sound. Whoa. And we are on the set of Kindergarten Cop 2. I want to say, I want to say, Cop. This is the first time I've ever had to take four takes for something like that. You're rolling, right? I'm still rolling. <laughs> yeah, all right. We're going to use that as a yeah, I believe in you, dog. Tycoons TV. Music, movies, money, motivation. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Big Sleeps, and I'm here in Vancouver with my boy, Bill Bellamy. Yes. And we're here on the set of Kindergarten Cop 2. Bill, welcome to Vancouver, man. Thank you, man. It's a really beautiful place, man. I've, I've had such a wonderful time here, you know, getting to know the city a little better. Like, I, I came about four years ago. It was wintertime. I didn't really do much outside because it was cold. But, like, now, you know, since I've been here, like, three weeks, almost a month, um... It's just been incredible. It's, the weather's insane. Downtown's got so much vibe. And working on this role, man, it's like a real fun, like, action comedy. You know what I'm saying? It, it's something that uh, my kids can watch, your kids can watch. And it's fun. It's family. It's a family-oriented movie, so it's kind of nice. Okay. And you got uh, Dolph Lundgren in the movie. Yeah, Dolph Lund Lundgren is uh, he's playing uh, Agent Reed, and I'm Agent Sanders, and we're, like, partners in crime, and we get... We start messing with these Albanians because these Albanians uh, basically steal uh, our database. And it has uh, all the information on our uh, witness protection people and people that we're trying to secure. We got to get it back. And uh, they're trying to get it. So, you know, there's a middle guy who's this hacker who's trying to sell the information. So we're going to lock his ass down. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so that drives us to the school and the kids because the guy was a teacher. So we're trying to find the information. And somehow it's trapped at the school. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to say, you know, first off, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's great to see that you're still in the game. You know? Yes, so sir. You've been doing it for a while, you know Yeah, what I'm man, 20 years in. Uh, you know, stand-up, comedy, I produce, I act, I, you know, I write, you know. Um, this is just, like, a, amazing that, like you said, to have longevity, right? Because Casper, knowing that I've been doing it, you know, since I was a young man, and it's like, wow, I feel good, still, still hungry, still got the same kind of energy, you know what I'm saying? But the time goes so fast, like I can't believe it. Like I gotta really look. I'll be like, yo, I was 23 right there, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. So I'm excited, man, you know, to still be working, and, you know, to meet you guys and see what you guys are doing with Tycoons TV. It's, it's gangster. I love it. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, and, and what was your favorite movie to work on? today? Uh, I want to say how to be a player, okay. you know, because yeah. everybody, <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, yeah, man. If Peaches is here, Uncle Fred is in the house. Now, Uncle Fred, that's the Mac of this family, the original player, my brother. Now, that man that taught me dope, everything it was just I like, You know, it was, it was like one of those movies that I felt like was every, every dude's dream movie, right. right? You know, it's like, if you could be the dude that had all the chicks and you could make it manage and make it work, mm -hmm. that's every dude's dream, <laughs> real talk. So, like, even now, I get guys that come up to me. Even chicks will be like, you know how to be a player taught me a lot of stuff, you know? So with the dudes, they like, yo, B, man, that was me. You was just doing me, right, you know? Because everybody's done a portion of that. Oh, yeah. So that, that was one of my favorite films, but uh, one of my favorite dramatic films was Love Jones and uh, Any Given Sunday. I thought those two movies were oh, just, yeah, just yeah. really ill, solid, solid films. And, uh, you know, I got a whole bunch, but those two, whatever, those are the ones that come to my head. Is there a personal favorite movie that you have? Like this, not, not that you've done, but what's your, your personal favorite movie that you've ever seen? That I like? Of all time? Uh, I, I, I want to say Friday. Okay. I think yeah, yeah. Friday is just, that was like my movie. Like Fridays was like so relatable, so fun. You could watch it like 10 times, you know what I'm saying? And you still gonna laugh. Yeah. So I think Fridays is like my all time favorite. Well, speaking of Friday, last night we got to see Straight Outta Compton. Did you get a chance to see it? Oh, movie not yet? yet, not yet. I, I, I'm going to see it definitely. Go it's a see. must see, man. I heard everybody says it's insane. It was, it was definitely a, a feeling of like, you know, sometimes they, when you do see a movie, they kind of, kind of make out of Hollywood it a little bit. Right. No, I didn't get that feeling with it. You know, they it kept actually, it felt raw. As black people, you know, we we, we, we could be in a situation where we're yelling at each other yeah. and somebody cracks a joke and it's real. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and true. a lot of times in the scene, they try to stick with this this whole 
this shtick that, you know, it's either got to be funny or you got to be an angry black man. Right, right. And they were just being real. And it just it was a great depiction of, of I believe, of who they were as people and who at they were time. as artists and at, at them at the time. And I'm telling you, go, go see that movie. Yeah, man. I hear nothing but uh, great things, man. I, you know, I was reading an article about Straight Outta Compton. And what's really interesting about that group in WA is that what they were, what they stood for, and what they were trying to do at that time is still relevant right now. Isn't that crazy? It's like absolutely bananas. Like if they came out right now, they would be just as relevant. Yep. Because the same issue. Madness. Right? It's like, wow. Like, did we really advance at all? Is it crazy? I mean, it was just, it just hit me when I read the article. Like, man, these dudes was trying to make a way where nobody saw that way yet. They created their own way. They had enough attitude, enough swagger, enough confidence to just say, yo, this is us, and branded themselves and made a movement, really. And uh, I'm just happy to see, you know, not only the film do well, but like, it's documented. Like, that's, that's forever now. NWA, mm -hmm. yep. you know, the movement, the attitude is forever a brand for eternity. Somebody will be able to watch that film. I think that's gangster. Yep. Yeah. And you, I mean, and, and being a part of, I mean, the hip hop culture from yeah. when they drop, I mean, to today, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on hip hop itself? From, from I think, you know, I think hip hop is still here, you know. I love it. I still love it as much as I did when I first started, you know, you know, kind of feeling like I was a part of that culture, you know, in the 90s coming up and then watching hip hop explode. I just think that I think we need to get back to really, really consciousness of what we're doing, what's going on in the communities, and really have our voices heard. Even if it's in the music, people can change songs and, 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 and can touch people's heart. I think we need to hit on the issues. You know, and right now everything's about, you know, money, 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 hanging with the chicks, smoking weed, and this and that. Booty shaking. Like, and booty shaking, <laughs> which we love, let's be real. But I'm saying like, like what are we talking about though? You know, we need a couple of cats like, more cats like Kendrick Lamar, man. Like, you know, we need some new Nazis, you know what I'm saying? We need some some brothers that are like Common and, 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 and uh, these guys who just really had a, a perspective. Like, I mean, like what Big was talking about in the 90s and Pac was saying, you know, it was like these guys, not only were they rappers, they were poets and they had a, a really strong perspective on the community. So true. That's why we loved them because they were spitting stuff that we could see visually. We could hear the words and it'd be something we would say or you'd be like, yo, that's real. That, that's how it's going down in my neighborhood, right? right? I mean, cats ain't talking about popping bottles every day. No. I mean, we live in every day. You no. feel me? So that's what I hope for hip hop. Just keep going. And, and I mean, now, obviously you're out doing comedy, comedy shows still. Yeah, I, I love it, man. I'm working on my next special. Uh, last year was a real big year for me, you know, I just, I just killed it, you know what I'm saying? Standard wise, I got two specials out there, it's amazing ladies night out tour, I got Crazy Sexy Dirty. Um, my new joint, I haven't really dropped the title yet, but I think it, I think it's kind of feels like this, like you better, it feels like this might be the title, I'm not sure yet, but it might be, you better be glad I'm laughing. Okay. That's the attitude of it. It's like, thank God for laughter. Thank God that, you know, I can find another avenue to say how I really feel about life because life is rough and life is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my Richard Pryor. Like, you know what I mean? Where it's coming from the heart. You know, it's your life experiences. It's how you feel about it. And you, you're you not afraid to say it. That's exactly. where I'm at. You know what I mean? Is that, you know, you just cold because you're getting older now. You know, yeah. You don't care what anybody We really don't <laughs> care. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to really be safe. I'm, I'm really just trying to be me. That you have to. I'm being myself and like really trying to lift people up through laughter because i think laughter to me comedy is like music right you could be changed by one song you hear one joke you hear it a thousand times but it's just like oh my god that's my joint right mm -hmm. so that's what i try to do with my stand-up is like you know create classic jokes or scenarios that everybody can relate to and just be like yo yo you know i did that right you know that happened to me right you know what i mean and it makes you laugh. That's what's up. Right. Okay. Okay. I mean, if there's anything you could tell, I mean, especially the youth of today, I mean, as we were talking about, um, you know, it's, it's funny how we're, you know, 20 years later right. and we're still looking at the same stuff going like, damn, for real? Yeah. I mean, if there's anything you could tell the youth of today to inspire them and motivate them to, to do positive things in their life, what would it be? First and foremost, I would say you got to believe in yourself. You don't need other people to believe in you. You got It starts with you first. You got to believe positively about who you are and what you can do, right? 
and then just do something, a little bit of something every day. It's how you treat people, how you communicate, you know, your friendships that you have, you know, how you fellowship with your brothers like we're doing, you know what I'm saying? I came out here, you know, I didn't know anybody. I met another brother who met who knew you and then boom we made it happen right i was open to the possibilities and i think that's what we need to do as black men and women is like really really take pride in who we are and how we can help each other we are so talented i mean we do everything man. Yeah. i mean we invented <laughs> i mean when you look at music like i mean roll, you got to think like, about it man blues, we are so jazz. incredible race of people man we've been through a lot of stuff and we still find a way to win right I think we should take pride in ourselves first and foremost, help each other, you know, collaborate, get more and more people positively uplifting each other, and then we could do anything. That's what I'm saying. You know, you know, you can ask us for anything, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. You need tycoons, we got I'm you. messing with tycoons, homie. Yeah. Huh? So is it, where, where, where can everybody find you, like on, on, oh, on yeah. the web? Oh yeah, on the web, like I'm, I'm right there, BillBellamy.com. Uh, you hit me on Twitter, at BillBellamy, Instagram, at BillBellamy. On Facebook, I'm at Bill Bellamy, VIP, V as in Victor, I's and Ivan, P as in player. <laughs> and uh, it's been real, man. I love it. Thank Respect, you, man. Sleep. I got to get back to the set, y'all. Got to get that money. <laughs> Bill Bellamy, y'all. Tycoons you. TV. <laughs> uh, please. <laughs> That's good, man. Tycoons TV. Music, movies, money, motivation.